Hello and welcome to the Hoop Scoop. This is your girl TT. Please hit the like on your way in so we can get into the algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. Today we will be talking about the top women's players in the transfer portal and why we think they might be there. These are in no particular order. Let's get started. First, Kiki Ariafin. Ariafin's entry into the transfer portal to leave Stanford was a shocker, as she has been at Stanford for her entire college career beginning in 2021. She was a projected top five pick in the WNBA 2025 draft. A closer look reveals this is most likely tied to the retirement of head coach Tara Vandeveer, but it could also have something to do with the Pac-12 conference realignment. The approval to move Stanford to the ACC was completed in 2023. Aria Finn has a do not contact in place, indicating she already has a school in mind. Next up is Regan Beers. Beers' transfer announcement was almost expected. Regan plays for Oregon State, where she averages a double-double of 17.5 points and 10.3 rebounds. We expect that this decision was made largely due to the switching of the conference from the Pac-12 to the West Coast Conference. Moving on is Talia von Olhofen, another Oregon State Beaver that entered the transfer portal. Talia averages 10.7 points and 4.1 rebounds. Like Regan, we believe her decision was based on Oregon State switching conferences from the Pac-12 to the West Coast Conference. Next up is Caitlin Chen. Caitlin is a senior for the Princeton Tigers. At the position of guard, Caitlin averages 15.8 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and 4.9 assists. We believe Caitlin is transferring because according to ESPN, the Ivy League won't allow its players to use the extra year of eligibility provided by the NCAA during the C-19 pandemic. Next up is Janiah Barker. The SEC All-Freshman that averages 12.2 points per game, 7.6 rebounds, and 1.4 assists for the Texas A&M Aggies. This one came as another shocker that Barker entered the transfer portal, given that she decommitted from Georgia to follow her head coach, Joni Taylor, to Texas A&M. We thought that Barker was a good fit at Texas A&M, so we aren't quite sure why the move. Next, we have Alexis Andrews. Alexis is a shooting guard for the Charleston Cougars, averaging 12.5 points per game, 3.9 rebounds, and one assist. Her decision to transfer to the portal, from what we can tell, is centered around finding a program with more opportunity to show her flexibility on the court. Alexis was awarded CAA Rookie of the Week, Player of the Week, and CAA All-Rookie Team during her time at Charleston. Next up is Haley Van Lith. Haley transferred from Louisville to LSU, where her stats took a sharp dip. According to the Daily Advertiser, LSU coach Kim Mulkey stated, and I quote, Her aspirations were to get drafted this year, Mulkey said. And she realized, I need another year and I need to go back to a place where I can relax and get back to my normal position. And what do you do? You hug her and wish her well. End quote. We believe this is a good move for Haley as her move to LSU didn't suit her well. The next 10 ladies will come directly from the 247sports.com article titled, The Top 10 Players in the 2024 Women's College Basketball Transfer Portal. We want to cite them to assure we are giving proper credit as to where this information originated and that I will be quoting it almost verbatim. Now let's get started as we also feel these ladies should be highlighted. Georgia Amore. As stated by 24-7 Sports, Georgia Amore is a grad transfer from Virginia Tech to Kentucky. Amore is going to use her final season of eligibility in Lexington playing for her former coach at Virginia Tech, Kenny Brooks. Amore has been operating at an all-league level, averaging 18.8 points and 6.8 assists per game in 2023-2024. Next is Grace Van Sluten, a sophomore from Oregon. Van Sluten averaged 15 points and 7.1 rebounds a game in 2023-24 for the Oregon roster that never could find its footing inside the Pac-12 conference play. Tamia Gardner, a sophomore from Oregon State. Unlike Van Sluten, Gardner played deep into March for an Oregon State roster that made a run into the Sweet 16. 
In the process, she played elite level minutes, averaging 11.6 points and seven rebounds per game. With Oregon State leaving to be a part of the WCC, it's safe to assume that Gardner will be looking for a home in one of the major four conferences. Next up is Lucy Olson, a junior from Villanova. Olsen was a walking bucket during the 2023-24 campaign, averaging 23.3 points per game on 43.8% from the field. Olsen also managed to grab 4.8 rebounds to go along with 3.8 assists per as well. She's right there in potential impact with any available backcourt prospect in this cycle to date. Next is Talia Scott, a freshman from Arkansas. Much like Olsen, Scott is a true scoring threat from the perimeter. She was the perimeter freshman in a league that produced the eventual national champions in South Carolina. Scott went to work early and often, finishing the season with 22.1 points per game and 3.3 rebounds. Her three-point percentage is a place for growth as she connected on 29.5% of those attempts during the 2023-24 season. Next is Liza Carlin. She's a senior from Marquette. Carlin is an interesting prospect unlike any in the initial rankings as a potential C-19 year front court option. She was as efficient as anyone on the list in how she went about her business during 2023-2024 season, posting an average of 17.7 points and 7.9 rebounds per game. Carlin added to that by doing it on 49.7% from the field, 35.7 from beyond the arc, and 82.2 from the free throw line. Next, we have Liatu King, a senior from Pittsburgh. King does what she does on the hardwood, rebound and finish. During the 2023-24 season, King averaged a double-double finishing with 18.7 points, 10.3 rebounds per game. More importantly, she did that on 52% from the field. King didn't make a single three-point attempt, capping her offensive value to an extent. King was fantastic from the field, shooting at 52.3% clip on the year. Next up, we have Layla Felia, a junior from Michigan. Felia just entered her name into the portal and becomes an elite level option for teams needing versatility on the perimeter. She averaged 16.8 points and 3.6 rebounds during the 2023-24 season. More importantly, Felia was efficient from the field and the free throw line at 42.3% and 80.1 respectively. Her three-point percentage dropped almost 10% this season from 41.7 to 32.1 is something to work on at her next stop. Next, we have Sailor Poffenbarger, a sophomore from Arkansas. Poffenbarger finished seventh in the country in rebounding at 11.2 boards a game in 2023-24. That's higher than anyone else currently in the portal and makes her an extremely valuable commodity for anyone needing more of that on their roster next season. Poffenbarger also managed to post 10.2 points per game through her field goal percentage of 35.5 is a place for improvement. And lastly, we have Deja Kelly, a senior from North Carolina. Kelly put up a noteworthy stat line average as a veteran option for the Tar Heel roster that advanced around in the NCAA tournament. She finished with 16.3 points, 3.9 rebounds, and 3.2 assists per game during the 2023-24 campaign. We wish all these ladies the best success in finding the best fit for them. We want to thank you for joining us and have a great day. Remember, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Goodbye.